Hey, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of the Monaco Crypto Summit here in Monaco. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, and Lauren Bissell here, founder and CEO of Immutable Industries, focused on the advancement of technologies in art, entertainment, uh, blockchain, across multiple sectors. Uh, great background in entertainment, music, complying that into the convergence and to crypto. Welcome to theCUBE, Lauren, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. It's been an incredible day so far. So we were just talking before we came on camera, your background and just the people you've worked with in the music industry. You've been there a very long part of your career from the beginning. Now you're on the wave of Web3, crypto, DeFi. So you know, this is a confluence of refactoring businesses. We're seeing, you know, we're seeing that impact. And I think a lot of people, finance and entrepreneurial, the best brains are coming into the sector because it's an opportunity clearly to reset and refactor old antiquated business models and practices in a new way to achieve the same things better, faster, cheaper. Exactly, um, you know, and it, well, better, faster, cheaper is good sometimes, other times that's, you know, we'll, we'll see. But I, I think for me, coming in from the music industry was something that I honestly never expected to be yeah. involved in blockchain and futurist tech. It, it's always something that I admired but I didn't really see, okay, here's how I can be involved in that. I was obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. But as I was sort of progressing my career as a music producer, I saw so many issues with the industry, the way capital came in, the way that it was distributed. I mean, these things are still happening today, right? But I was just constantly looking around for better solutions yeah. Yeah. and how to make this work in a better way. So, you know, in 2017, when I started really diving into crypto, that was something where I saw a huge opportunity for the entire industry. The, the music industry is notorious mm -hmm. for just sort of being behind the curve when it comes to new tech. And it's a shame. When you're in an industry that's full of art and innovation, you would think that it's something, yeah. you know, it's an industry that would embrace this position. And maybe some people do this, and I applaud those people very much, but in general, the music industry is kind of behind. We, we live a little bit in the Wild West, yeah. not in the futurist way, but kind of in the old way. So I'm, I'm just really excited to be able to, to bring these things into the industry. You know, it's interesting. I'm not in, in, the, in the industry, in the music side, but I've been in the software industry where mm. you had the proprietary software, the rights, and people used to build software, and then when the company went under, the software was gone, lost forever. And then around the late 80s, 90s, open source <laughs> movement happened. Yeah. And it just changed everything. And I think, to me, I feel like this is a similar structural inflection point and change where rights are changing. People are still holding on to, like, you can't use the copyright. And I even saw a stat that said with AI now, you can actually copyright every single melody, every single note in music. So that means, like, who the hell's going to develop anything? So, like, are even rights even mm -hmm. matter? So rights, ownership, art, mixing, um, funny story, my son, a year and a half ago, mixed uh, an old song from uh, uh, a band that wasn't around and it became like a TikTok sensation. Hundreds of hundreds of millions of listens. Um, and then a Spotify and Apple account was making like 20,000 a week. And DistroKid cut them off because someone went back and claimed the copyrights. But it was a mix of yeah. a couple different pieces of the song for a new melody. But because that wasn't his work, they just killed the middleman, killed the account. Right, but if there had been maybe an easier solution for him to go get those rights, so I actually used to be a rights and royalties negotiations, ne negotiation specialist. I was on the phone with labels every second of every day. Um, and you know, from a producer standpoint, you're trying to find something that works for the artist, something that works for the label, something that you can yeah. arrange in perpetuity if possible. But it's just, again, there's, there's so many people that have to just it's like get a Byzantine on the phone. system of like, huh? yeah. like weirdness. Right. What's the solution? I mean, right now, one of the favorite, it, it's super simple. Smart contracts related to publishing and royalties. Now, you still need probably in the interim mm. someone to go out and, you know, the old school job for someone in rights and royalties is sitting in a restaurant and listening to see if the music is being played, right? And then you write it all down on a piece of paper. I mean, that's yeah. quite old school, but that still happens in a lot of places. So we can kind of move into smart contracts yeah. for the payment systems, and eventually we can move into AI to actually detect what music is being played where. Um, 
and you know I, just to go not really on a tangent but it's like okay well are we taking a job away from someone who's supposed to sit in a restaurant and listen to the music well I think we're developing a lot of new jobs by needing yeah. to generate this software. So it's, this is I mean, normal. I've heard that, I've, we've heard that way. argument before. Oh, bank tellers are going to be put out of business by the ATM machine. Turns out there's more branches now. Right. right so, okay, this, this right. is a total waste yeah. there. I mean, people say that a lot. I mean, but it does bring up the next gen. So the, you know, the creator, the young, young artist, uh, the ability to collaborate with smart contracts. The uh, removal of the middle person in all this, the intermediaries, Right. Is it really the key, right? I think it is the key. And, and and like I said before, removal of the middle person, some people would look down on that. I think it's more efficient systems. When you have more efficient systems, you have more efficient societies, you can create bigger and better things. So is there a change process yeah. that has to happen there? Yeah, of course, but this is humanity. This is history. This is what happens. So I... Okay, so you're a pro. You've been through, I choose to embrace you've been through, you've been through the, the business. You got the scar tissue, you got the experience, you got the, you got the brains. Now you're here in the front of a new generation. A lot of pioneering going on, a lot of chaos, a lot of confusion. Some people, you know, blood spilling on the ground. There's a lot of stuff going on, right? Mm -hmm. That is opportunity. What are you up to? What are, how, how are you attacking this market? How do you look at it? What's on your mind? Yeah, I mean, so what's funny, I've actually been spending the last few years um, sort of directly advising individuals and companies in the music industry. So everyone from artists to label executives, um, content distribution executives, uh, licensing teams and publishers, and sort of explaining, you know, here's how things work, here's how we think they're gonna go, and here's how instead of running away from that and trying to block your artists from using that system, we can actually use this to enhance the financial pie of the music industry instead of just trying to steal a piece of everyone else's pie. Like that's what I really want to do is the industry pie can get bigger. We don't need to like steal your blueberries, you know? Yeah, it's they're just, picking up crumbs and fighting over crumbs. Exactly, like industry change, and I understand why it's scary, like I really, really do. I, I've lived through this, but what, are they, what do they say? What, what, what do you, what do you, what's your advice to them and what's their reaction? Is it like, yeah, you said to get lip service or like, yeah, we're trying my best. I'll stop drinking, I promise. You know, <laughs> I mean, I've heard, I'm, I tried last week. I mean, are they actually getting it done as though they don't know what to do? Yeah, well, I think it starts with individuals. So I've, I actually spend a lot of time working with individuals on education mm -hmm. um, and how they can take that information to their companies or implement that in their companies. So it's it's on sort of a, a corporate level, mm -hmm. it is slower. That's okay, that's expected. Mm -hmm. um, but educating sort of individuals, like I said, that's what I've been doing for the past few years, is what's really been helpful because if you just kind of do this overnight, I understand it's not gonna happen overnight. But being able, like I said, to figure out, okay, we grow the financial pie for the whole industry, like this accumulates, this helps the health of the industry. Yeah. And like I said, I grew up in the industry. I care a lot about the industry. Yeah. I actually want to see yeah. good things Positive happen. In it. Like it's, it's in my heart, oh, in so my soul to make the music industry. So, so Lauren, I gotta, I gotta ask you, so as you see the industry changing and, and it's gonna be hard to get people to go through transformation. Yeah. They have to get there, otherwise they'll be extinct. And we, we kind of see that. Is there new new brands emerging that are have a clean sheet of paper? Because if I'm a young artist, I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I can write my own ticket, and by the way, brands become platforms is a big trend you're seeing with NFTs and and, yeah. and these these great Web3 platforms. So I got more more social power, I got collective intelligence, I got network effect, I got fans. All that's tap tappable now from a monetization standpoint. Yeah. Are there new agencies, new brands emerging that's artist friendly like this? I mean, that's one of the reasons we're here to begin with. Like, I, I'm obviously just going to mention Digital Bits because they're literally creating NFTs for brands. Like, I'm here because I believe in what they're building. Their model is applicable to brands. It's applicable to artists and uh, athletes. It's, I, I actually truly believe in what they're building and how they're doing it. NFTs is a faster way to achieve what we thought we were going to achieve with sort of the tokenization of a person or like yeah. an individual brand. NFTs, I think, is a, a better way to do that. Obviously, NFTs are tokens as well, but yeah. it's a different type of thing than an ICO. It has more versatility, 
and it's got the same kind yeah, of characteristics. Well, I think you can build more community with it. Yeah. You can uh, maintain the value of mm -hmm. the token itself, the non-fungible token itself, a little bit better, and uh, you can build you can build community around it. What are some of the uh, companies you're advising and people you're advising? Are they record labels? Are they uh, executive, like an executive coach on yeah. one hand, business consultant on the other? Yeah. What's the, some of the range of? Uh, so um, I actually advise uh, a couple of brands I can't completely speak about <laughs> in the music industry, but from the executive position, I do advise individual executives from the label and the content distribution side mm -hmm. on sort of how to implement futurist tech into their company a little bit better. Um, and sort of what the real things that are going on, the new things that are going on. I actually just uh, took on a role for a company called Cyber Yachts, which I'm really excited about. <laughs> We're, th this one is just this one's just going to be fun. International <laughs> music entertainment fun. So um, you need some media up there. We'll have to do interviews. On yeah, the boat, you can you know? come on the metaverse yacht and the physical yacht if you want to. But uh, Monaco's a great place for that. That will we will be here. All right, absolutely. So tell me about the, um, the future of um, some of these big agencies you mentioned, because if you look at the market right now, if you zoom out, content is king, distribution is Kong, right? That's what they say. There's a lot more distribution now more than it seems content. Uh, maybe that's maybe on some perspectives, but it seems like there's a lot more outlets looking for better content. Always. Do you agree that the distribution's hungry for the content? Or um, is there more content than distribution? Uh, you know, I think it just depends on the type of content. If you look at the content that's being distributed over, say, social media, for example, there's a plethora of content. Yeah. So uh, some not there's so actually many. now this new hierarchy there where you have to really scrap to, to get to the top. Um, so in a weird way, you're seeing that sort of mimic. We, we see how societies work, right? So like now that's become very hierarchical. Um, and that's almost mimicking the way the traditional industry has been developed. Mm -hmm. So we go through these cycles, you know, yeah. it's... It must it's be hard for like a record label to try to do the A&R job when you have more artists emerging from TikTok, Instagram, the social networks. Or I would say their job's no. probably gotten easier. You think because of the filtering? Well, yeah, yeah. now you can, you can view, uh, you can view so much talent in a, a tiny amount of time yeah. online. Now, do I know what they are like live? Do I know how they perform? No, yeah. I gotta go figure that out. But uh, before, you had to go to clubs and sit in there and run around a city. You can only yeah. be in so many places and at one time. And chase content down, look it down. Yeah. All right, so what's the most exciting thing that you think's happening in the whole crypto world um, that's, oh that's people should pay attention to that's going to impact some of the mainstream? What a, what's the most important thing that you think? Well, um, something that's actually somewhat unrelated to music, which is government adoption. Sorry, yeah. but hands down, that is the most exciting and important thing that in is terms going of on right now. Them adopting it and embracing it is important. Adopting it, and embracing it, regula new regulations coming out. Um, I, Are you happy with the progress? Yeah, I but mean, it takes in. time. Yeah, but right now, we, we, the biggest sort of country that's done it is El Salvador. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. You and know? now Monaco's leaning in. Now Monaco is obviously leaning in. That's, yeah. it's exciting. It's really exciting. Well, to me, I think digital bits and what you kind in earlier is that there's a legitimate crossover between the physical asset, digital asset world, exactly. and now the kind of the, the tough parts, yeah. the in between the details and the gaps, the contracts, the royalties, yeah. compliance, what does that even mean? Right. How is that going to get sorted out? Do you think it's just going to settle itself out on its own or self-govern, a little bit of a, Iron Hand uh, in there, or? It'll be a mix. I mean, you know, there's a lot of trial and error going on right now as far as governments. Like I said, there's really only a few places in the world that are doing it. I, I just, I applaud these places yeah. for their bravery because don't get me wrong, like it's going to be a struggle. Yeah. There's going to be failures and successes yeah. and being willing to be one of the countries that does that, it's, that shows some grit. Yeah. I really respect it. And the upside it. if they get it right is huge. Lauren, final question, what, do you, what are you up to next? What's on your mind? Uh, what are you working on beyond this consultancy? What's around the corner for you? Where do you see it? What's, where do you see yourself dots connecting in the future? Well, you know, I'm really, um, right now I, I travel quite a bit. I spend a lot of different 
you know, a lot of time at different conferences. I, uh, I spoke earlier a little bit about an education program that I'm developing um, with an alliance with uh, Draper University in El Salvador. So I want to finish the programming for that. We're going to scale that out across multiple countries. And that's everything from education for governments and education for people that yeah. maybe just recently heard of Bitcoin and they don't even know how to go about yeah. seeing what it is. 5G in emerging countries, pretty potential there. It, you know. it is, absolutely. Stuff. Lauren, thanks for coming yeah. on theCUBE sharing. Thank I you appreciate so much. It. Lauren Bissell here on theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, live in Monaco for the Monaco Crypto Summit, Digital Bits. We're going to a big gala event tonight with Prince Albert and in attendance. A lot of action, a lot of big news happening here. All the players are gathered for the inaugural Monaco Crypto Summit. I'm John Furrier. We have more live coverage after this short break.